If you are looking for a nice piece of steak to enjoy solo or with guests, you can't go wrong with tenderloin. Fairly affordable if bought as a whole muscle, this cut also offers incredible flavor. Here's what you need to know about tenderloin steak. Filet mignons are medallions cut from the portion of the tenderloin that is near its thinner tip. Mignon comes from the French word for cute, and these steaks are indeed cute little chunks of tenderloin. But if you're thinking these two steaks have a lot in common, you are onto something. The reason beef tenderloin and filet mignon look and taste similar is because they are both cut from the tenderloin area on the cow. The tenderloin is an oblong muscle extending from the rear of the spine from near the hip bone to the 13th rib. This particular muscle doesn't get exercised a lot, making it the most tender cut of beef. While we know the filet mignon comes from the skinny end, the beef tenderloin is taken from the longer end. Though the beef tenderloin is larger than a filet mignon, it is smaller than a number of cuts of steak, including the round, rib, and chuck. The tenderloin costs more per pound than those cuts because there isn't as much of it to go around. Beef tenderloins are also pricier because they are so tender but not as tender as a filet mignon. According to My Chicago Steak, the tenderloin area produces a quote, melt-in-your-mouth texture when cooked. Upping the cost even further is the fact that each beef tenderloin only yields a few filet mignons. Tenderloin should not be too hard to find. According to The Spruce Eats, you can likely find it at the meat counter in your local grocery store, or you can buy it from a butcher. The outlet advises that when purchasing, try to secure a steak that is around one and a half inches thick to make cooking it to medium rare that much easier. But how much steak should you buy? A tenderloin usually weighs between four and seven pounds, so let's do a little bit of math. If each pound serves around four diners, that means a four pound tenderloin could potentially serve 16 guests or four ounces per person. McCormick, on the other hand, puts the meat-to-person ratio higher and recommends planning for 8 ounces of meat per guest, or 6 ounces if you're offering it up with substantial side dishes. The three main cuts of tenderloin are the butt, the center cut, and the tail. If the tenderloin is cut from butt to end, it will result in very thin steaks. The butt can be used for carpaccio, a thin piece of steak served raw, while the center cut can be sliced into even-sized steaks since the diameter is pretty consistent throughout. The center cut is where you can get those delightful filet mignons as well as pieces for another tenderloin dish. For example, you could make dishes like beef wellington, which is a beef tenderloin wrapped in layers of pâté, mushroom mix, parma ham, and puff pastry. The tail of the tenderloin, however, is not consistent in diameter, but pieces from this cut can still be used in recipes that call for small, tender pieces of steak like like beef stroganoff. The center cut can be roasted whole and should be enough steak for up to six guests, while a tail-end tenderloin can feed a larger dinner party. Another consideration when purchasing tenderloin steak is whether to opt for buying it trimmed or untrimmed. Untrimmed tenderloin will have the fat and silver skin still intact. Silver skin is just connective tissue that needs to be removed before cooking, because it is tough and chewy and won't melt during cooking. If you do leave the silver skin on, Cuisine at Home cautions that it will shrink, twist, and turn the meat into a corkscrew. Instead, the outlet recommends removing it by first pulling off as much fat as you can with your hands. Then, locate the part that looks like packing tape. This is the silver skin. Slip a sharp, narrow knife under it to make a tab. Grab the tab and carefully run the blade underneath, leaving as much meat behind as possible. A whole tenderloin will also have a thin, fatty piece of meat that runs the length of the entire tenderloin. You should be able to remove this piece by hand, and you can even use it in a stew later. Of course, untrimmed steak is a little cheaper because it means more work for you, but according to McCormick, the butcher will likely trim a tenderloin, and unless you are Alice Nelson, it will probably cost you a little more cash. Some sexy cuts of steak, like T-bones and porterhouses, contain a section of tenderloin. But if you plan on cooking a whole tenderloin, remember that the cut is thicker on one end than the other, and so the skinny end might prove to be a challenge since it is smaller than the rest of the steak. This can cause it to cook quicker than the rest. To combat overcooking, the Spruce Eats suggests folding over the smaller tip and tying it to the body of the roast. According to Cuisine at Home, this is a task you might also be able to bribe your butcher to do for you. If you want to try your hands at cooking a filet mignon, Delish recommends starting the steak in a super hot cast iron skillet and finishing it off in the oven. As far as seasonings go, the outlet uses olive oil, butter, black pepper, rosemary, and kosher salt. The online outlet advises that a nice salty crust is absolutely key for filet mignon. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite foods are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.